March Madness is here, and let's run through some of the key injuries for the big tournament here before everyone enters pools and picks. This is Dr. David Chow, Sports Injury Central. Yes, we're more than just football. We'll dabble into college basketball here and talk about the top 10 injuries that may affect March Madness. Uh, first one would be Ker Carissa from Arizona, the guard. And you can see here, he tweeted about his right ankle, very swollen, very black and blue still, turned his ankle, doing everything he can to play. His six score currently is probably about a 36. I don't believe that he will play in the first weekend of games. By the second round of games, not this first weekend, but the Sweet 16 round, believe that he can climb his six score to about 73. Don't expect him to play the first weekend. Second weekend, with Arizona's talent, they should still get through. He can play, but will not be 100% effective, even Sweet 16. If they get to the Final Four, I think he should be pretty good. Baylor is the other injury uh, snake bit team. Obviously, they've already lost. Uh, don't get mad at me, I'll butcher the name here, Jonathan T.T., Jonathan Tachawa Chachua, I don't know how to say the name, I'm sorry, but it's a knee injury, multi-ligament, lateral collateral ligament tear surgery, he's done for the season. L.J. Cryer suffered a foot injury February 16th, said to be day-to-day, -day, in, out, questions, but he's been seen in a boot and is not in uniform at the last Baylor's game, Baylor game March 10th. Uh, he's missed the last 11 games. Uh, he was the leading, the second leading scorer. Look, there's suspicion perhaps of a uh, uh, foot, fifth metatarsal Jones fracture. We don't have exact reports, but it would be a surprise if he returned. And so his sixth score is very low at a 13. Kendall Brown, guard forward of Baylor, should be good to go. His six score is a uh, 92 out of 100. He banged knees in the uh, March 10th loss, Big 12 championship uh, game. think he's going to be fine and good to go for uh, March Madness, including the first games. Now, understand in college, there's very little information out there. There isn't the same injury reporting as at the professional level. So certainly we're doing what we can with the information available. Next up, let's talk about Kansas. And, and uh, Mitch Lightfoot is an issue. But David McCormick is the really the, the starter. Um, McCormick is, prob is dealing with a sore foot and forced into some minutes restrictions. And uh, he's probably going to have to play more because uh, of Mitch Lightfoot's injury. Lightfoot was listed as day-to-day. -day. Um, you know, he got his legs taken out from under him, a knee injury, likely an MCL sprain. Mitch Lightfoot is iffy at a six score of 53, which means David McCormick's six score is a 78. He's likely going to have to play through some foot soreness. We'll see how effective he can be. Expect him to play. But with additional minutes, how effective is the question? His six score is 78, and that's Kansas. Next is Illinois, Jacob Grandison. His six score is a 73. He, uh, quote, sprained his shoulder on March 3rd, still in a sling March 6th. Uh, but there's two plus weeks to the first round. Uh, he's a senior. Um, Look, whether it re requires game day injection, I don't see him missing. I think he will play. How effectively is the question, but do believe Grandison will play. Uh, Michigan State, Tyson Walker. Uh, look, he's not practicing yet early this week. His sixth score is likely 54. He's going to want to try and go as he's a starting point guard, but... Uh, you know, right now it's a little bit early. It's only six days from his uh, injury. Um, you got to get the swelling down. I think he's at best 50-50 to play in the first round here in March Madness. But if Michigan State can get the second weekend, I think we'll see more of him. Next up is Ohio State. Zed Key and Kyle Young, two big men playing the same position. 
Not real optimistic on Kyle Young. I get that he's a senior, but this is his third concussion. Very difficult to return to play and get cleared. Uh, A general rule of thumb, nothing is in stone when it comes to concussions. First one, you miss a week. Second one, you miss a month. Third one, in the same year, you miss the season. This might be where Kyle Young is at. Hopefully not, but you really can't take the risk. So his sixth score is quite low at 16. Uh, Zed Key, uh, ankle sprain. Uh, He's likely to be back. Uh, Sixth score, 78. Right ankle injury, February 27th against Maryland. Um, He played seven minutes in the regular season finale. Didn't play in the conference tournament. Uh, He's fourth in scoring, but he really should be uh, back in playing. Maybe not at 100%, therefore six scores a little lower at 78. San Francisco uh, forward uh, Masaki. Sorry for the uh, mispronunciation. mispronunciation. Yahoon Masaki. He banged knees. He's got a high six score of 89. He did not play. Uh, in the conference championship, but San Francisco was already in the tournament, so there was no reason to push it. Uh, Bang knees, March 5th against BYU, missed the Monday game against Gonzaga, which the team lost. But, um, and, uh, you know, he really should be fine going forward here in this tournament. And finally, Nelson Phillips, guard Georgia State, There really is no injury information uh, on him. It's an undisclosed injury. We don't have video. He's stated to be day-to-day, but he's missed three games. So he's certainly longer than day-to-day at this point in time. Look, it's March Madness. It's the tournament. I'm sure he will lobby to play, but it's hard for us to make a random prediction or assign a six score when we don't have any injury information or video on him. All right, that's a quick summary of the top 10 college basketball March Madness injury issues and six scores. Hopefully this helps you in your pools and brackets. Uh, Go to SICscore.com for live updates in-game and throughout the March Madness tournament. This is Dr. David Chow. Thanks for watching.